Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Dr. Tim Cummings. He's a senior technical services veterinarian for Zoetis. Tim, thank you once again for coming by. Oh, it's an honor to be here. You do a lot of work with infectious bronchitis, and this is a disease that is constantly changing, it seems. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's one of our primary respiratory bugs that we deal with year in, year out in the broiler industry. Now, vaccines and diagnostics are obviously a big part of that, but every now and then you gotta get some help from what you call sentinel birds. Tell me about what sentinel birds are and the role they play in infectious bronchitis. Part of the diagnostic process, sometimes it's, it's difficult to tease out actual field viruses. And yeah, we've got, we've got other diagnostic tests, isolation, PCR, serology, uh, those type tools. And, but sometimes it, it, it may not give a complete picture. And so really the, the gold standard is trying to pull out the field virus that's actually there that may or may not be causing the problem. This is an additional tool available to you where you actually use live birds to become infected from which you try to isolate the viruses, the field viruses from. So would you, in a situation like this, use a specific pathogen-free or SPF type of bird? There are specifically what we call SPF birds, specific pathogen-free, which you, which you just alluded to. Because mm -hmm. uh, it seems like that would give you a clean slate if absolutely. you're gonna put the birds in. And, and ideally, that's what you wanna use because they are raised in isolation. They are guaranteed to be pathogen-free. So when you get the birds, any, any viruses or bugs that you isolate from them came from the field instead of came with the birds, so mm -hmm. to speak. In this situation, we weren't able to get SPF birds. We had a, we had a field problem going on with the company, mm -hmm. a respiratory problem. Uh, we were doing diagnostics, but we also opted to include the sentinel birds as well. Uh, but we weren't able to get the specific pathogen-free birds at that particular time. So how do you go about that? If the SPF birds aren't available due to supply or whatever, uh, what kind of birds would you use? In this situation, we actually used the broiler company's own broilers. We yeah. took them from day of age that they hatched, mm -hmm. and then we placed them in isolation ourselves. Oh, I see. So okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't perfect, but we had a whole separate facilities mm -hmm that, that it, in, a, in an isolated house with, with litter on the floor that they were raised in isolation to try to minimize any exposure to any kind of other field bugs. And then we used those as the sentinel birds and we raised them up to four weeks and put them in pens out in the chicken houses in the field and then a week later we went and collected them, took samples submitted those samples for virus isolation. And well, proving once again that necessity is the mother of invention. So um, what did you learn when you, when you got the, the test back from these birds? Well, we did, uh, we're number one, we put in this particular situation, we put sentinels on 20 farms. So that, that's a significant number of farms. That, that's a good number of farms. And from all these broilers that we tested, we did isolate respiratory viruses. And so every farm we got, primarily bronchitis viruses. And, and when you say you put, put them on 20 farms, walk me through that. How many birds, how many houses, what kind of number do you need to get a good sampling? Well, we just selected, we just selected a farm, and it would be just the, the one house on a farm. And we built a small pen in, inside the chicken house to contain these sentinel birds so we could find them again. So you don't turn them loose. No. It's, yeah. You could, but you could spray paint Spend them. Spend all day uh, but looking for them, yeah. You know, we, we just were trying to make it practical. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why I call it Southern style. And um, so, and, and we used 10 birds that we put in these small pens. After we put them in the pens, of course, they get exposed to the viruses that are in that chicken house. And then a week later, we went back in and, and collected our samples. And those are the ones we used, you know, tracheas, uh, lungs, kidneys, cecal tonsils. And, and those, are the one, those are the tissues we used to make the virus isolation attempts in which we were very successful. So this is, you can use broilers if you need to. So how do you measure success with that? From my point of view, we got respiratory viruses from 20 out of 20. So we pulled the viruses out. Now, all of them seemed, to, in this particular situation, they were all related to vaccine. We didn't pull any new variant, variant bugs or strains of bronchitis out. So what that tells me is that that 
that wasn't necessarily the problem. Didn't guarantee it, but there weren't any real variant bronchitis floating around out there in the field causing problems because you would think out of 20 flocks, you, you ought to pull some, a few, at least a few out, and we didn't, so. So then, armed with this information, you do what? Fine tune the vaccination program? Well, in this situation, they did. They, they did make, they, they did, they already had made some vaccination changes mm -hmm. at the time we actually got the birds ready and got them in there, but, but it, uh, and the vaccination changes improved the situation. Okay. But so we it was really a follow-up to, to see if a particular program was working? Well, it, it was it was actually a follow up as they made the vaccination changes. So, but we also from that from this effort, we we recognized, hey, we don't need to include any other vaccines because we don't have any other variants in the field. So, it it it, it was a worthwhile endeavor. I think they appreciated it, and it's something that we can try yeah. elsewhere as well. So. Now, what would be the downside to taking this, I'll call it the poor man's approach to uh, <laughs> the SPF birds, uh, or sometimes the supply just isn't there. Obviously with SPF, you're getting that, it's a gold standard, you've got the yeah. clean slate. Yeah. Uh, so if you are taking progeny from their own broilers and isolating them, is there anything there that's going to put its finger on the scale or, or, or tip well, the results in any way? In, in, I mean, I think there's good arguments either way. You know, I, if, if you're trying to isolate bugs from broilers, in, in one sense, I could argue it's probably best to use broilers to try to, re, you know, to, to re-isolate mm -hmm. from. Uh, SPF birds, you know, you, you should, readily, they're chickens, so you, they should get infected with whatever's out in the field. But uh, on the other hand, you know, raising the broilers yourself, you can't guarantee that they're pathogen free when you put them out. So uh, that, that's kind of one of the downsides. And, uh, you know, and one, one interesting thing, when we put these broilers in, in, the, in these chicken houses, they've never been exposed to coccidia. So they, some of them had some rip roaring cases of coccidiosis. So, but uh, uh, when we sampled them, but that's, you know. But again, even though these, even though the progeny were put into isolation, they're coming from hens that presumably had been vaccinated, right? Yeah. So there was some inherent protection there, I would think. Yeah, yeah you've got some maternal antibodies. Yeah. And uh, uh, coming from the hens, so. But it, it was just, a, it was just a, a situation, an opportunity to try to help a, Try to help a company with, a, with, with their problems and trying to do everything we can to see if we can't uh, help them identify really what was the cause. And well, it sounds like a really creative approach, and I'm glad it worked out for you. Yeah, we, I, I, I feel comfortable, in that, and we may try it again. So, Excellent. We have been talking to Dr. Tim Cummings. He is a senior technical services veterinarian at Zoetis. Tim, thank you again. Y'all enjoyed it.